So welcome to this episode of All Things Vanderpump. And we're going to be talking to Ryan Lochte. We've seen him kind of grow up. We've seen him make mistakes. Now he's a dad and he talks about some of the mistakes he's made. But yeah, it was actually really nice to see the more personal side of him. Be sure to stick around because I have my friend, Heather McDonald, who's always totally current on what's going on. And she'll be filling me in on what's going on in reality television. And then we're going to have a call from Lucy. So I will see if I can give her any advice. I've been on this planet a long time. Sometimes I've seen some things that maybe you guys haven't. So I'll see if I can give her any advice. So let's get started. Well, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you doing? You're, you're training right now, aren't you? You're in Florida? Yeah, I'm in Gainesville, Florida. I went to the University of Florida and um, I moved back. I just moved back actually like three years ago to train for this coming Olympics. So you've been swimming since you're how old? <sighs> um, <laughs> since I was three. <laughs> oh, really? Did they kind of chuck you in the water and it was just like <laughs> swim or no, die type of thing? I actually, I actually fell into the sport of swimming, like literally fell. In, I fell into the diving well. With my snowsuit on, I used to live in upstate New York. So I fell into the swimming pool and normal baby would have been like crying, but I was like giggling, laughing, like having a good time <laughs> in the water. And so my dad rushed over and I was la laughing. So he just left me there. In your snowsuit? Yeah, I was just because I was floating and I was just loving the water. And he was like, oh, gosh, we got a swimmer. Oh wow. And so yeah. when did you when did they kind of really realize your true potential? When did they look at you and think, okay, this guy's gonna make it to the Olympics? What age was that? Um I mean a lot of people had a lot of doubt in me. Um they were like, cause at a little kid, I was like, I wanna go to the Olympics. I wanna get a gold medal at the Olympics. And they were like, Yeah, right, keep dreaming. Um and it wasn't until after my freshman year of college is when people were like, oh, wow, this this kid has a chance. Like, this kid could do it. So, so was, you didn't I guess get you into... Say, uh, did you get into college on a, scho uh, a scholarship on for a, swimming then or not? Yes, yes. Right. At the University As, of Florida. And were you naughty at school? Because you're kind of a bit naughty in life, really. <laughs> <laughs> were you naughty at school? <laughs> I mean... As yes, when I was younger, I was I was a mischief yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, I see that about you. <laughs> but now you've kind of had to grow up. Really, you've had a couple of dodgy experiences, which I'm sure you've learned from. Yes, and you've got yes. two. You've got two kids. So oh, two beautiful kids. Yeah, I heard them in the like, background just before we started. Yeah. Are, they, <laughs> are they the love of your life? They are. They're the reason why I'm still alive. Like. They're, why? Why they is make that? everything because they just they make everything worth living for. I mean, they're. I think I was put on this earth to be an amazing dad. Like, oh, I love to I, hear that. This is so like, you, yeah. This is like my calling. Um, I just love it. Every day I wake up, even though it's frustrating at heart, like at times, especially when I'm trying to train for the Olympics. Every time I look at into their eyes, I'm just like I'm speechless. How old are they? I love it. Three and one. Oh, wow. My and who, boys, who, yeah, my boys three and my daughter's one. And have they started swimming yet? Probably, yes. <laughs> uh, my son, he knows how to swim. Um, we, we did a couple swim lessons with him, but then he picked it up really quick. And my daughter, she's the water baby, but she does not know how to swim. Not at oh, all. Oh, sweet. So you're <laughs> absolutely obsessed with them. So, so now we're we're living in a world of, you know, I was thinking, having lived on reality television with my whole life, you know, I think I've done something mm -hmm. like four or five hundred episodes of reality television <laughs> over 11 years and produced Vanderpump yes. Rules for eight years. You know, it's sometimes very hard when you see kids grow up, not that you're a kid anymore. I mean, you've been mm -hmm. doing this for, for years, swimming and things. But when you see people make mistakes, and I don't want to go into everybody knows, you know, what went yeah. on, it's moving on. But but when it's so public, you know, it's so much harder, isn't it? Because I think everybody makes so mistakes harder. in life. 
And then you've got to deal with it in public mm -hmm. and everything you say is scrutinized. And I'm thinking now, people don't get a second chance. You see all this cancel mm -mm. culture. Nobody's allowed to make any mistake of any kind. Yeah. What do you feel about that? Because if what had, you know, happened now, you know, what had transpired a few years ago, yeah. maybe the outcome would have been very different. How do you feel about that raising your kids in today's society? You know, it, it's kind of seems really brutal now. It, I mean, it is. It is really brutal. Like, I mean, you can't, you have to watch what you say. You have to watch what you do, like anything, like you're under a microscope. And um, I mean, it's, I think it's only just going to get worse. It's just how, that's how reality is. Uh, it stinks, but I mean, that's how it is. Um, for me, it was hard. It was really hard. Um, it was the most of, hardest thing for me was not like all like the um, criticism and all the hate stuff I was getting. It was more of, I have fans and I had little kids looking up writing to me, looking up to me and writing me and saying, you're not my role model anymore. Like, oh, wow, that, that, hurt. that is like a dagger in my heart. Like I was devastated, crushed. And that's when everything was just so hard for me. Like, I just couldn't do that because I care so much about like everyone that it was just very hard. Um, but luckily, I have a beautiful wife that helped me push through and just keep moving forward. Listen, everybody stronger. makes mistakes and you got to the yes. top of your game. That is something to be very mm -hmm. proud of. And I do believe that you even beat Michael Phelps at one time, didn't you? A couple times, yes. Oh, a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I don't want to get that wrong. So, so now you're going, <laughs> so now you're going into the Olympics. How, how many hours are you training a day and, and how, what does that entail? Oh, uh, so, um, my training regimen, so I'm 36 years old, so I will be, if I make the Olympic team, I will be the oldest male swimmer at the Olympics. That's extraordinary. Um, yeah, which is kind of exciting. Um, but so like my training regimen has trained dramatically because I'm not a young kid anymore that I can't just go in the pool, train all these hours and recover Ryan, Just you're like a that. young kid to me, so be quiet. Oh, wow. Well, oh, come on. <laughs> well, so when so, did you feel that you were at the top of your game? When did you think that, okay, this is it, I'm really peaking? What age um, was that? It was uh, probably around 2011, 2012 Olympics is when I hit my, the, the fastest I've ever been. Um and then after 2012, I started swimming be was becoming a job and I wasn't, I wasn't having fun anymore. Um, so I started, my time started dropping drastically, um, all up until I, uh, I took a break after Rio, um, cause I was suspended. Um, and then when I got back in the pool, um, I've been happier. I'm so excited, like going to swim practice every day. I have a purpose going there. And I'm seeing times that I've done back then that I do now oh, at really? age 36. Wow. So I think it's the dad strength and the old man strength. <laughs> <laughs> so how long were you suspended for? How, how long did you take out then after Rio? Uh, I was nine months after Rio and then... 14 months, so like 23 months. And what did you do years. then? Was that just a period of self-reflection where you thought, wow, I really screwed up here? and Or, or did you think, it, okay, I'm going to get through this and come back better than ever? Well, uh, I mean, during that time, I was thinking maybe I should just quit. Ooh. Hang up. I mean, I have a, a gold medals, world records. Um, I had a good run in swimming. Maybe I should just stop and just try something different. Um, and then, so I did, I was thinking about that for like a year or so. And then my son was born and something happened where I was like, I want to do this another, I want to give this another shot. Like, I think I can do it. And cause I want to teach my kids like lessons in life. And, you know, in life, the world is cruel and 
you're going to get knocked down in life all the time. But it's how you get back up and how you keep moving forward that's going to define you as a person. I really and, like to hear that. I really do because, yeah, you and, didn't end on a sour note. So, no. to, yeah, make so it come that's back. What, that's what I want to teach my kids. Like, your daddy was knocked down to the bottom. And he got up and he was a fighter and he kept fighting. And I'm still trying to write that story right now. <laughs> oh, wow. I love to hear that. Unhappy with your smile? Well, you don't have to be. Thousands of people have used Candid, the clear, comfortable, removable, and practically invisible aligners to help straighten their teeth. And now they love their smile. Just like Sharon H. from Pittsburgh. She wore braces as a teenager, but flash forward 30 years, and she noticed crowding on the bottom. And that's when she made the decision to try Candid and she finally got her confidence back. Candid is here to help you straighten your teeth so you can fall in love with your smile too. Your treatment is prescribed and closely monitored remotely by a licensed orthodontist who's an expert in tooth movement. And while other companies use general dentists, Candid only works with orthodontists. So you get the same orthodontist who created your plan from beginning to end. So become your best you. Start straightening your teeth today. And right now, you can save $75 on Candid's starter kit. Go to candidco.com slash Lisa and use code Lisa. That's candidco dot com slash Lisa code Lisa. Take advantage of this limited time offer to save $75 on your starter kit and candidco.com slash Lisa code Lisa. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one app. At Audible, you can find the largest selection of audiobooks, languages, and thousands of popular podcasts and more. Their new Plus catalogue makes Audible membership so much more valuable and gives all members a chance to listen to and discover new favourites and new formats, such as the exclusive Words and Music series, and members get one credit every month good for any title in our premium selection. I love listening to their language options. I speak French. I lived in France for many years, but obviously I haven't traveled there lately. So I need a place where I can practice and it's a perfect place. I keep it fresh. So Audible's been a huge help. I can listen to it in the car or when I'm cleaning up around the house or I just have it on and it's been great. Even Ken's kind of picked up a few words. He actually understands everything, but his favorite is menage a trois. I'm like, don't think so. Okay, anyway, new members can try Audible for 30 days for free. Visit audible.com slash Vanderpump or text Vanderpump to 500-500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash Vanderpump or text Vanderpump to 500-500. When, when you were kind of off, you know, in your downtime, did you experience any depression or did you still have that fighting, you know, spirit? Um. So the times where... Like I was reading Twitter and like I was getting oh. those messages about those little kids being like, oh, you're not my role model anymore. That killed me. And that's when I was depressed. I was like, I never had suicidal thoughts, but I had thoughts of like going to an island and leaving and no one will ever see me ever again. What would you have like, swum to the island? Yeah, probably most likely. <laughs> How long would that take you? <laughs> <laughs> a very long time. <laughs> so and what about had, your partner, your <laughs> wife? She kind of talked you out of it, I'm sure. Yes, she she basically slapped me across the face and said, wake up, this is not who you are. You keep going and you keep bettering yourself every day. How important is it this year to go to the Olympics? And is this going to be the, the last year? And then what do you do? Or are you going to keep going? Um. I don't know. I'm having so much fun in the sport of swimming that I'll stop swimming when it's not fun anymore. So right. um, this this is a very important Olympics. It's probably my most important one just because I want to prove to everyone wrong. Um, and I want to teach my family, teach my kids, and make sure everyone knows that like at the age 36, like you can still do it. Like age right. is just a number. Um, and like I have the Tom goals. Brady of swimming. Exactly. There you go. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm all about that. Do you have any 
you know, physical kind of aches and pains or things that you think, oh God, I hope this doesn't hold me back or, or are you feeling as fit as you ever have done? I oh, mean, I, I have trouble putting on my so, socks, Ryan. <laughs> it's so hard to get out of bed sometimes right Is now. Is it? Yeah, I just feel it. Just because I'm putting my body into pain every day because I'm just working out nonstop every day and my body's taking a toll. Like I'm not a young kid and I can't, recover as fast as the other younger swimmers because when I go home I'm I have to be the super dad because my kids want to play with daddy yeah um so I have to have some kind of energy after a hard workout for two hours I have to come home and play with my kids so I don't really get that recovery time that all the other younger swimmers do so it's that's really hard um but I mean, also, my kids are what keeps me motivating, what keeps me going. So, you know, over over the years, you've had this incredible career in swimming. Mm-hmm. But when, you know, the day comes that you think, okay, it's try, you know, it's time to hang up my Speedo, or if that's what you wear, or you call it, my or brief. whatever. You know, yeah, that, <laughs> uh, that sounds kind of wrong. <laughs> or banana but, yeah, that, hammock, whatever you call it. <laughs> oh, God, that, that's, that actually sounds even worse. I don't even think I can use those words. To you, but anyway, um, okay, well, if that day comes, or when that yeah. day comes, what are you then going to do? Are you thinking of uh, becoming a manager or training, or, or what? What's next for you? What really excites you? I would love to like go around and te- doing swim clinics, teaching kids how to swim. Oh, I love. I would to hear love that. that. Yeah, because um, I mean, I do some swim clinics now, um, but I would love to do it like full time, do motivational speaking because I think my story is very unique. Um, and I think there's a lot of people that can relate to it. So I would love to like teach kids how to swim and do be like a motivational speaker. Yeah, absolutely. But what, what do you think is your biggest regret in this whole kind of the way this has played out? Honestly, um, I don't have any regrets. I honestly, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. Um, if... If that whole real incident didn't happen, because I was just going down a dark hole, a like a dark hole. And I mean, it could have led for me, I don't know, dying or getting in a car wreck and like crashing or something, being a drunk driver or something like that. So I was just headed down this dark path. And if Rio didn't happen and I didn't like wake up and like smell the roses, like I would have never have done that. And I wouldn't have try to better myself, try to become a more mature Ryan Lochte. Absolutely. And so do you think you were drinking too much at that time in your life and this was a real Um, wake-up call with it? Yeah. I don't know if I was drinking too much. It was just when I drank, I had no, like, limits. It was like a competition. Hey, I'm in the bar business. I know a lot of people like you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> after 35 restaurants bars and clubs that yeah. ain't unusual <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. so it was so, just it was got to a point where i needed a change i needed to become a better person and were you with your wife then or were you dating her then? uh we were we were dating at the time and then after the real thing is when we me and her started getting serious and oh, we got I bet she got, got real married. serious with you then. How hard did yeah. she kick your butt? Oh, she whooped my ass. <laughs> oh, good for her. I like her. Put her on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you seem to be to be a man that, you know, you're very aware of other people's reactions and you don't want to disappoint anybody. And that seems yes. to be one of the, the hardest knocks for you. So... Yep. Oh, I want to say one more thing. You've got this new fitness program, Locked In yes. Training, uh, powered by Suprema Fitness with Jennifer Cohen. Yes. Can you just tell me about that? Yeah, so my um, she's she's like the fitness guru of everything, uh, Jennifer Cohen, and she's the CEO of Suprema Fitness. And I teamed up with her um, to develop my own digital platform called Locked In Training. It's where, because my entire life, people have been saying, "What? how do you train? Like, how does an Olympian train outside the swimming pool? So I was like, you know what? Let's do it. So I teamed up with um, Jennifer 
Cohen, and we developed this um, on-demand, live demand, so you can watch me um, work out, and you can do the actual workouts with me. And if you want to oh, really? pick a different workout yourself, you can go on the website and pick out a different workout that I've done that you can do on your own as well. So, I mean, it, the platform provides on-demand workouts um, and like you get a workout with like an Olympian. Like, I mean, it's awesome. I host them. Wow. Yeah, I host them every week uh, about two yeah, about two workouts a week, and um, I've had special guests. Like I had my one of my best friends, Colin Jones. He was a former, t- a four time Olympic medalist. So he he was on there, um, and yeah, the fans can train with me I love as I prepare to hear that. for the summer. They can watch yeah. you. Do you interact with them or not? Yeah, I chat yeah. with them. I'm like, come on, guys, you can do it. Let's keep it going. So it's not like a someone talking into a camera it's actually me going one-on-one basically it almost feels like oh that's great that's such a great idea yeah okay well i might give that a whirl but oh uh, yes I'll need, come on i'll need, <laughs> I'll need more than <laughs> stop laughing for goodness sake you're supposed to be encouraging me <laughs> well wait, well, well <laughs> no there's other things that i've been doing because i told you how I'm 36, like I can't recover. So I'm doing things differently than I've ever done. So I teamed up with um, True Niogen. It's a cellular um, energy and repair uh, dietary supplement company. So I yeah. teamed up with them and it's been helping me so much with my energy because I need so much energy because I just beat my body up in the swimming pool and then I come home and I'm super dead. So this true niogen company has been seriously amazing. Like I really? have so much energy all the time. I love it. Okay, well that's fantastic. Gosh. Yes, yes. So it's been really helping me a lot. Okay, well that's really, yeah. really good to hear. Well, you look so in you great can, shape. You, can, you huh? can try true niogen and then you can do a workout with me. Oh God, it might take a little <laughs> bit more than true Nigen for me to work out. Oh, with you. <laughs> come on. I believe in you. Oh, well, I'm glad somebody does. Hey, I used to be a I used to be a barefoot water skier. How about that? You gotta have oh, some wow. balls to do that. Yeah. I used to I've do that. I've never tried that. I wanna try that. Oh, you could do that easy. You could do that in your sleep, for goodness sake. No. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, well, anything in water I'm pretty good at. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. Well, we'll leave that one alone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for being on my yes, podcast. Of it was a blast having you. And as I say, I thank wish you. you lots of luck. I want you to succeed. Thank I, you I think, so much. yeah, really. Congratulations thank you for on everything. Me. No, yes. absolutely. Thanks, darling. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Green Chef. The number one meal kit for eating well is now owned by HelloFresh. And with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. I love switching between the brands and now my listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount with me. Green Chef is the first ever Kato meal kit on the market. It makes sticking to a low-carb lifestyle easy with recipes averaging only 14 net carbs each. And they're the most sustainable meal kit offering 100% of its direct carbon emissions and plastic packaging in every box. So you can feel great about what you're eating and how it got to your table. I ordered the balanced living box so I could get a variety of seafood and vegetarian options. And I love that everything came planned out, mostly prepped. It is so easy. You get the ingredients, you put it all together and you're done in a second. Nothing wasted. So go to greenchef.com slash 90Lisa and use code 90Lisa to get $90 off, including free shipping. Go to greenchef.com dot com slash 90 Lisa and use code 90 Lisa to get $90 off, including free shipping. Native deodorant believes self-care is a two-way street. There's you and there's the products that you use. Native is a deodorant company that cares about what you put on your armpits. That's why their deodorant's ingredients include things you've actually heard of, like coconut oil and shea butter, Another plus, none of their products are tested on animals and almost everything is vegan. 
Native has a line of sensitive deodorants, plastic-free deodorants, and even an unscented option, which I personally love. And if you want to keep trying something a little different, you can check out their rotating seasonal scents. Don't be shy. They have a 30-day return and exchange policy. You can even subscribe to Native, so you'll never have to sweat about running out of deodorant again. Make the switch to Native today by going to Native Dio dot com slash Vanderpump or use promo code Vanderpump at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's native, D-E-O dot com slash Vanderpump or use promo code Vanderpump at checkout for the 20% off. So here I am with Heather McDonald, who's my friend and my kind of reality mentor in a way. You kind of tell me what's going on in the world and uh, host of the very successful Juicy Scoop podcast. So what you got? Well, um, this is pretty interesting. This just came out yesterday. And the stylist... Who I just I, got back from Vegas, so I how, know nothing. I just had a Juicy Scooper say that they went to your restaurant in Vegas. Oh, did they? Okay, yes. good. So yeah, I, I knew open. it was already open for a while, but it seems like, is Vegas like popping again? Yeah. I mean, it's still got the distance situation right. like we have here. But all yeah. the restaurants are actually pretty busy, I have to say. Oh, that's great. So what you got? You've got a glint in your eye, so I know you're up to no good. Obviously, you remember the infamous wardrobe malfunction. The nip slip. With Justin, yes. And and Janet Jackson. And it recently came out again because with the Britney Spears documentary, people started to look back and kind of see how Justin seemed to have gotten away with everything, being that he was the guy and the way people sort of reacted. Um always letting him off the hook. And that being one of the incidences where he said, oh, it was wardrobe malfunction. And he did fine. And she, her career really suffered when her nip was ripped, okay? And you saw the nipple, remember? Well, why would anybody care? That's what I don't understand at all. I mean, if well, it was inadvertent, it wasn't on purpose. Well, now we know that it was on purpose. It was on purpose. According to the stylist that just did an interview. So there's this stylist. Well, just found that out. Well, if you want to believe this person, yes. So the stylist said... That and he told page six that yes, this was totally planned. That Justin wanted to have like a huge moment, and and I think that she was in on it too because originally it was going to be a dress that she wore, and then at the end he was going to step on it and it was going to like pull away and it was going to reveal that she's wearing a pearl g string like the kind of pearl G-string that was in an episode of Sex in the City at Nobody the time. Nobody could dance like that and wear a pearl G-string. I'm I sorry. Agree. <laughs> yeah. I might take your voice up a few octaves higher. <laughs> I mean, does anything sound less uncomfortable, honestly? No. But, so I whatever never reason, understand anything like that. They but. said, oh, she didn't want to wear the dress or something, probably because she couldn't dance in it. And that's when they came up with the nipple thing. Okay, run it through. You're like, okay. What exactly happened? They were dancing. They were dancing, and, and uh, at the very end, he pulled down her, her the top, and it revealed her naked b- boob. But why and was a, he pulling down the the top in the first place? It was just going to be a moment that, like, and then he tried to say, "I never meant for the whole thing to come off. Only one layer of it was supposed to come off, and it was still st- supposed to cover her breast, but both layers came off." revealing the naked tit, which then they had to pull away. And I don't think he ever really thought it through as, I think he just thought of Super Bowl being a huge moment, not that it was like a family moment that everybody's watching I with their kids. I actually gave it as much importance as I believed it deserved. And that was not a lot coming from Europe where nipples are on show 24-7. Right. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy how much people were so negative about it, but I do remember where I was. You were... Uh, come on. No, I was. I was at a good That's Super like Bowl John party. That's like John Lennon dying or something. You remember I know, but I, you I remember because prior to that, Peter was helping the, the family with like their TV and stuff. And somehow the, the DVR aspect, which was a little bit new at the time, was not working. So we could not rewind it. And we were very bummed that we could not rewind and watch the nip. Because it was kind of like, that's a sad situation. Yeah. You wanted to rewind and watch the nip. Once wasn't enough for you. 
<laughs> no, we're all just like, what is this? So now the stylist, why would the stylist have taken so long to come out? How many years ago was it, for God's sake? It was like 2004 or something. It was so a really long time ago. 17 years ago. Now we're still um, talking I about the same nipple. He's writing a book. And he says, oh, I have so many, other, so many other stories besides that one. The stylist is writing a book? Yes, but I mean, I'm like, but why page six now? Like, it's exactly what you said. I think you might have been just drunk with and someone where and told the this nip weird now? story. The nip is probably pointing oh, it's somewhere around her waist. <laughs> Did you ever know Janet Jackson? No, but I knew Latoya, okay. and I met Michael a couple of times. In fact, I went to Michael's funeral. Oh, you did? Over at Staples Center? Yeah, and in fact, I went and I was really, yeah, I was with Latoya and Jeffrey, her manager. And in fact, the first time Latoya came out to dinner, because we knew them quite well, um, she came to Villa Blanca, and we kind of protected her. She knew that we wouldn't call any press. So she kind of came there secretly the first time she came out to dinner after Michael had died. Um, and, you know, we would never, we never call paparazzi in any of our restaurants or sell stories to Radar Online. I'm like, what I've been accused of, as I say, if I was going to sell stories to Radar Online, I would make a fortune out of what's happened in my restaurants. Well, how did you meet her? I just met her. Actually, I think I might, I met Michael through Kathy Hilton. Oh, okay. And Latoya, I just met in the restaurant. She was a regular at the restaurant. Oh. Yeah. She was lovely. Do you really keep sweet. in touch? I haven't spoken to her for a while, but yeah. And I saw Jeffrey, who's like a manager and best friend. And okay. I saw him recently. I haven't seen her for a while, but she's a lovely person. She's very kind, very sweet. Yeah. But I had that, but like a baby voice like Michael did. You yeah, know, she did. Very sweet, yeah. very kind of that, yeah. young, but very good hearted. I always just remember it was just so strange, like how she lived at home with the parents until she was like 30. And then one day she just does Playboy. Then she gets with this guy who's like her manager. It's not an that antithesis. one. Yeah. And then, and then she says years later, like, I was sort of trapped by this weird guy. And then was she was like so walking around like she was a captain of a ship all the time. You know, I, with like the sailor caps and all that. Well, I remember Latoya telling me that because they were Jehovah's Witnesses, yeah. that when Michael had the album Thriller out, yeah. I mean, that was pretty risque when he would do all those dances where right. he was grabbing his crotch and things like that. That was pretty risque. Yeah. Um, and he was still going door to door, you know, and selling as a Jehovah's Witness with the family. Can you no imagine? way. I swear that's what she told me. Because I live he, in a neighborhood that was always hit up by Jehovah's Witnesses. Can you imagine because, Michael Jackson suddenly showed up at your door? Cool, come on. There's no, I do not believe he was knocking door to door. I, okay, okay, that's what she told me. I believe me. she told you that. I don't believe her. Well, you don't Especially believe during it? You don't thriller? believe Well, okay, maybe it's just prior, but she said it was about that time. And she said that he was still very much part of that whole family unit. Well, I mean, that, again, was very much a yeah. the juxtaposition between being in this Jehovah's Witness family yeah, and then grabbing your crotch. I mean, again, it was kind of pretty strange. That's been the one God. nice thing about COVID. They had to stop knocking on the doors. Oh, stop. No, I'm serious. They really have not come around. I haven't seen any up here for years. I know. Any, well, ever. We, we, oh, we used to get a lot. We st always have where I live and where my parents grew up. Michael which Jackson never knocked on your there, door? No, because there was a big Jehovah's Witness building, which then went away. Oh, but they I still see. came to our neighborhood because I think it's sort of an easy walking neighborhood. Yeah, not and here. So, yeah, so I think like they would go do it. Yeah. And I always felt like, God, does anybody just go, yeah. Come on in. Many people say, yeah, come on in. Especially I guess. if it's Michael Jackson. Well, if it's so, Michael Jackson, I'd, like I said, I don't believe it was Michael Jackson. So now what's Justin Timberlake said? Has he said he was complicit in exposing the Nicole I have not? not heard his response yet. I just read that yesterday and I thought that was like, is he even going to dignify it with a response after all these years? It was a nipple well, for God's sake. He probably shouldn't because then it looks, he already said, I'm sorry to Janet that I like left her out and her nip out to dry. <laughs> he now realizes he did leave her out to so dry. And it did affect her you career. You think it really did affect her career? It did. She revealed that it, it did a lot. Like when a lot of the Me Too stuff came out and then you saw the other side of like the blackballing business-wise of even people that, you know, there was, it came out in that story that like, I think it was Les Moonves and people that were in charge of the network 
they were so mad that then certain things that she was supposed to do- She was just canceled. Just dropped or like didn't go to fruition, that type of stuff. So the other thing that I think would blow your mind as a show is- now, this is about the third season. I'm very... And it's one of those things I just can't look away. It's not a away. housewife thing, is it? Sort of. It's Seeking Sister Wife. Never heard of it. So, it is couples. Some are... Where does it live? On TLC. Some of it is couples that um, want to find a sister wife for religious What's reasons. What does sister wife mean? You know, like Mormon cultures, certain Mormon cultures have... More a than man, one wife. Yeah, a man marries many wives. And there's already a show that's been on for like 10 years called Sister Wives. And that's like these women that are all like about 50 and there's four of them. And they've been married to this guy, Cody. That's been on for like 10 years. And I've never seen that either. But the Seeking Sister Wives is these younger families and a couple of them are religious and they believe that this is, you know, the way They're of- They're calling. The, the, yes, the, the exactly. They're calling. But this one- this one family, I just feel like the girl is tricked. They got married at like, you know, 20, early 20s. They have two boys that are like 10 and 12. So they're only like in their 30s and they've been married this whole time. And they basically said that they, um, he got the calling to like have another wife. He got the calling. Yes. What a load of tosh. <laughs> I'm sure Ken's had that calling <laughs> <laughs> for the last 35 years. Yes. Got the calling. And what, you they mean just got said, the calling to actually just get laid they just, or actually wanted another wife to move in? and uh, Exactly. So then she's like, Oh my God. So we talked about it. And here's the thing. So they go online and they find this girl named Roberta and she's from Brazil. And she speaks- Is she a Mormon? No. No. She speaks no English. And- so in order for them to bring her here, it, they could only do it on a 90-day fiancé visa. And the only way they can do that is if they go get legally divorced. So they go get legally... So the only person they can find in the entire yes. planet out of 7 billion people to be the sister wife is a woman in Brazil that can't get here any other way than them getting divorced. What? Okay, what about their marital beliefs? What about getting divorced for no good reason? Well, they're Where does doing that... it to bring in this other wife. Oh, and do not get me so started the girl is on this like, nonsense. So we have to get divorced. So they, they perjure themselves on camera because they say to the judge, the judge goes, is there no way this marriage can be redeemed? Yes, there's no way. But they're like still together. So they're going to get their intention is to get married again as soon as she comes in. Yes, that's the only way she can come to America. But how do they know it's even going to work with her? Well, he is excited to try it out for oh, eight days in what Cabo. Was the, what was the video like? So they're going to Cabo? They go to Cabo to Are meet her. Are you kidding me? This has nothing to do with religion. Well, This is just a man trying to get his rocks off. Extramarital sex. Okay, now here's the you thing. She, I'm saying the truth. She doesn't speak any English. Well, even better. So then they have to do it all Ken on the... would actually probably have another wife if she yeah. couldn't speak any English at all. So it's all on the iPhone. So it's like how they translate. Oh, yeah. So they'll talk into the app. But like, what was the audition like? How does he know that she's the one? They just talked a lot on the phone. They already met in Cabo once before with the family. Oh. And they call her Mama Bert, short for Berta, and the kids love her. And how old is she? She's like maybe 30. And both the women are attractive, but this one is, is a little more petite. And he goes... So she's smaller when I hug her. Her head comes on my chest. So we call her tiny wife. And then we call this one large wife. Well, the <laughs> Is that not the worst? <laughs> okay, so if Ken was going to choose another wife, it'd be somebody that weighed three times as much as me. Yeah. <laughs> so I then you could be, be tiny, tiny wife. wife. <laughs> you have to be tiny wife. You're like, you could have another wife as long as I'm tiny wife. Exactly. Are you serious? Yes, and then they say... Um, so, uh, Roberta, they're doing it all on the iPhone, so they translate. So, so sister, she's there, so they're filming it now yes, in Cabo. Yes, and then they go, so sister, meaning the old wife, the large wife, sister says that I get to have you all to myself for the entire eight nights. So then- So the wife goes to Cabo, and then she's dumped. And the, and the production puts her in the room next to him and the tiny wife. Right next door. This makes housewives look like Little House on the Prairie. I know. 
Are you kidding? No, it's so disturbing. Well, now she's realizing she made a mistake. Who? Both of them. Large wife. Large wife is like... And so then they go to like start to plan the wedding. And she's like, I thought I was going to be a bigger part of planning this wedding. And he's like, like, tiny wife, do you like these flowers? And she's like, a large wife would like to say something. And it's just the worst. It's so the degrading. It's the whole unbelievable, thing. but so you cannot turn away. So what's in it for away. the Brazilian tiny wife? I think to come to America. Oh, you think? Come to, to America. And the guy is not, I mean, I think he's gross, but like. Is he going to marry her then? Aesthetically, he has like a, a decent body and he's like decent height and he's okay looking. So I think, yeah, I mean, she's like this 30-year-old Brazilian girl with, that's, that's pretty good looking, but she's got full metal braces. And I think she's just excited to come to America and be on a TV show. Oh, that just sounds horrible. Desperate. It's horrible. Oh my God. And then God. there's like I've got three other families it. that and it's are on just, TLC. Pre- just as easily disturbing. It's on TLC. TLC. What channel is that? God knows. Nothing sounds worse. This other so, family, so is, I think she is, just wants a sitter. She has three little kids. So is big wife <laughs> listen is big wife listening to tiny wife banging her husband yes. in the next room. Yes, we hope that she brought some earbuds. And is she kind of emotionally distressed over this? Or? Now she's starting to realize, like, maybe I, what did I do? See, I don't ever understand how this whole menage a trois, forget the Mormon and marriage thing. I, I think don't, everybody because gets Because there's talked, always going to be somebody who's left out, isn't there? I think they always get talked into it by their husband and then they regret it. Or yeah. they want to think that they're not jealous. They want to think they're, like, more sexually open. And then when it really comes down to it, I just don't think, the typical female is wired to be like, Absolutely I'm not, not. jealous, I'm no. okay. Absolutely And the not. typical guy does like more women. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. If Ken could get away with that shit, absolutely. Especially if she, he didn't have speak to her. He'd be, oh, Ken, let me ask you, would you like a Brazilian 30-year-old to move in? <laughs> well, thanks for coming by. Yes, And I love you. the pink. Thank you. I tried Perfect. to be cute for you. You kind of match the puff. We're going to wrap up with a call from Lucy. I love talking to you guys, so submit your questions and we'll see We'll see what's going on. Lucy, are you there? This is Lucy. Hello, Lucy. This is Lisa Vanderpump. <gasps> Hi, Lisa. <laughs> Hi, darling. How are you? Good. How are you? Thank you so much for calling me. That's so sweet of you. No, of course. I'm interested in your question. So go ahead. <laughs> so, yes. I wanted to find out what advice you would have for um, a woman like myself in my career. I want to feel a little more empowered in terms of, you know, I keep getting good feedback. I want to get a promotion. And I see that you've been so successful, not only as a mother, a wife, in your businesses, your restaurants. Um, Do you have, what's your secret to not only just being successful, but Feel empowered to just kind of do everything you can to get it. I think there are so many components to having confidence and to being good at what you do. What What is your line of work, can I ask? Uh, yeah, I'm a paralegal. Right. And are you kind of passionate about what you do? Is it just something that you really, really enjoy doing? You know, I, I am passionate about it, but sometimes, you know, you kind of feel like, should I change careers? Is this for me? Or is that maybe, you know, we have ups and downs and I just don't want to not stay in something that I do enjoy. And then just because, you know, for a a period of time, you kind of feel stagnant. Well, I think we all go through ups and downs. There's nothing that's going to make you happy 100% of the time, as I say. But if it's something that you think, you know, I really do kind of enjoy getting out of bed and excited about your work, I think that makes a huge difference. Because I know when I've been stuck in a job that I don't like, I'm not nearly as good as when I'm kind of driven by the excitement because my passion is my motivation. I think power comes a lot from your self-confidence. And that's why when I talk about how you present yourself at work, how you articulate, how you connect with people. Um, On so many levels, that's so important because it gives you the confidence. You know, when you're feeling you look your your best, you know that you're going to do a better job than if you're just kind of winging it. Do you you know what I mean? Yes, I do. A hundred percent. No, yeah, you're right. I think sometimes I 
you know, I second guess myself and I think, oh, maybe I shouldn't say this or, you know, put, you know, my advice on, on a case or something like that, because it, I feel like it may not be good enough. Do you have a mentor? Do you have somebody that you respect? Do you have somebody that you look up to? Because I always think, you know, it's good to defer to somebody you really respect and ask their advice. And I know that's helped me, you know, because I've branched out into so many different things that has been new territory for me. But just let your heart lead the way. Let them see how important it is to you. Give them reason, but also always have the facts so that you can back it up. You know, I think statistics are always really good as well. I do a lot of inspirational um, women speaking as well. And to actually say, okay, you know, you've got a 90% chance of being successful if you do this. Always have some of those things up your sleeve and really kind of ask yourself the questions when you're driving to, to your job and really answer them and find ways to, to articulate. You know, I think the way we communicate is really important, the timbre of your voice, the words you use, um, you know, to really kind of put a good case forward and not being too casual with that. I look at people, and I'm talking about this in the book that I write, I interview a lot of young people, and it's not necessarily about their credentials or their education. It's about the zest and the passion and the way they present themselves. Those are the people that I'm invested in. Got it. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for your insight that that definitely, you know, rings a bell and, you know, definitely it makes do, a lot of sense. Do you feel when you, because you're presenting a case or you're talking about a case, I'm always more confident with people that look like they've got their shit together as well. I think it's not just superficial how you present yourself and it's like, oh, anybody can do a job. If you present yourself, and I'm not talking about it doesn't have to be expensive clothes or anything, I'm talking about the mm -hmm. way you present yourself, if you look your best and you look like you're together, because if there's somebody that's going to be representing me or talking to me or advising me, I want to look at somebody that, I'm not talking about beautiful, I'm not talking about being 100 pounds, I'm not talking about that. And I don't mean fit the part because we come in all shapes and sizes or, or whatever, Correct. but that you actually look your best and you mm -hmm. look like you are ship shape. So because you're in a mm -hmm. job that people are relying on your advice because it's very important what you say and how you present it, basically. So I would say how you present yourself is going to be a huge part of, of how people are going to invest in you. And then obviously you have your facts and you have your case and you have your statistics and you have your confidence and then it should be bingo. You should be good to go. Awesome. Yeah. That, thank you so much. Yes. I, I definitely get that. Oh, well, well, I hope I can be of help. You know, I think it's hard to answer these questions just when I don't need you know, I don't know you. I I would like to spend an hour on this question. I'd like to be sitting opposite you, but I hope that gives you some confidence, you know, uh, going forward. It, it does. I think a key word that you said is just have the confidence to believe essentially in myself and know that, like you said, have it together, have the facts to back it up and, you know, have someone a mentor that will help me and guide me. Yeah, ask, to, their, you know, ask their professional opinion. And when you've had success, look back on how you felt before that success. Do you, Can you capture that feeling? Were you sure? Were you 100% sure of what you were saying? I think that's important as well. When you've had success, look at what the components were that led you to that success. And then make yourself mm -hmm. feel good about it. Dwell on that success before you go into your next meeting and think, I didn't know if I had it then, but I got it and I can do it again. Got it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Confidence is key for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I wish you lots of, lots of luck and uh, yeah. And enjoy your moment of success when it comes to you saying, I deserve this. I got this. <laughs> Thank you so <laughs> okay. much. You're welcome. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, so thank you, Lucy. I hope I was of some help. So send me your questions. I love talking to you. I wish I could spend all day talking to you, but I can't. But send me your questions. All right, bye, darlings. I'll see you very soon. So thank you to that fan caller. I love hearing from you guys. Please write in with your questions. I hope I've helped you. And a big thank you to Ryan and Heather for joining me today. Be sure to follow, rate, and review 
Cast Media's podcast, All Things Vanderpump. Wherever you listen to your podcast, you can also subscribe to All Things Vanderpump on YouTube and watch the video releases every week.